Good freaking morning, everyone. Glad to see your happy faces again. My name is Nick. Welcome to Nick's Fort. If you're new here, please don't hesitate to subscribe below. It's free. I'm posting videos every week. And today, we are going to talk about how to set up your Sony a7R 3 for shooting video, in my opinion, obviously. Let's get into it. First off, the menu for this camera is huge and I am not going to go over everything in the menu. I want you to think of this as a quick start guide for getting your video settings set up to start shooting pretty fast when you get this camera. But I do encourage you to dive deep into the menu and look at all the options and kind of figure it out but hopefully this helps you start shooting quicker, at least for the first day. You go, oh, I'm gonna get ready and go, and hopefully you can take away some of this information and use it in your own setup. All right, so step one, let's set up the custom menu inside of here so you can get to all of the things you need to get to really, really quick. Now, if you open up the menu and you go over to the far right tab, you can set up your own menu here and you can add whatever you want inside of there. So I can go over here and add an item and click through here. And as you do this, you pick out everything that you want in that menu and then you add that in. So let's say I wanted to add the record settings. I would add that and then you can pop it in wherever you want. Let's say I wanna put it there. I added it in. Now, if I go back to my menu, you'll see it down here. Record settings has been added. It was already added up top here. So I don't actually want to do that. So I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna delete it down here delete. Okay. And now I'm going to go back and I'm back in my main, my menu, my custom menu. And this is what I've put in here. I put the file format, record settings, uh, autofocus drive speed, autofocus track sensitivity and finder monitor. I end up using these frequently, uh, and I want to have access to them. So what I do is I have that set up, get that set up. And then I leave it here as my first item when I open up my menu. So I'm shooting, I'm shooting, click menu, and now I'm right inside of here and I have the five things I really care about. And these might be different for you, but for me, this is what I want in my, my custom menu. All right, so the second thing we're gonna do is we're gonna set up the custom buttons on the back of the camera. It's gonna take you a little bit of time once they're set up to get them to be instinctive, but once they are, they're super useful and it's gonna help you nail your focus, your exposure, just so much better when you're shooting. So setting up these custom buttons is a really important step in making this a really good video shooting camera. All right, so we're gonna jump in the menu and we're gonna go to the second camera tab at the top. And then inside of there, you're gonna go to custom key with the little picture next to it. And then you're gonna set these how you like them. This is how I like them. So I put my control wheel as aperture and you can change it to whatever you want, but I left it as aperture. Custom button one, which is on top up here, right there, custom button two, custom button three is right here, custom button four is down here. So if I hit custom button one, it's gonna change my focus mode from manual or continuous. So if I do manual, now I can actually go in and focus myself. I hit it again, I go back to uh, continuous autofocus. It's now gonna be in the autofocus mode. If I hit, let's say I'm in manual here and I click button two, that's my zoom. So now I can zoom in and pull focus between things. So there's that cable and I'm focusing in from there to my monitor right here. So that's gonna let me pull focus with a little bit of magnification. So then if I go into custom button three, which is the APSC full frame slash uh, the switch between the two. So you press C3 up here and it's gonna change between the two. So I was in the APSC mode, which is cropping in on the sensor. Um, and if I pull up the information, you'll see that right, right there that appears. And that's gonna tell you if you're in that mode. So now we're in full frame. All right, so you have custom button four down here. And when you click on that, it's gonna turn on your touch focus. So if I have that, your touch operation on, so I can tap here, and now it's gonna pull focus to that spot where I tapped. And if I tap back here, it's now gonna pull focus back there. So that's really useful to be able to pop that on real quick, turn it on, turn it off. Now, if we go into the custom button, next menu, we're gonna get into the multi-selector, which is this up here. 
let's say I have my focus point way over here on the top left corner, up top here. If I click the center of this, it's gonna pop it right to the center. And now my focus point's right in the middle of my screen. It's super useful when you're shooting to have that set up right there. Your center button, which is I've set to eye autofocus, which is more of a photo tool. You can use it to set your focus in a video, but I haven't figured out how to do it actively in terms of if you're recording video and it, you, using the eye focus to be active uh, while you're recording. You can use it beforehand to set your focus, which is kind of nice. I've kept the left button here as white balance, the right button here as ISO, and the down button as my peaking level. So if I go in here, I can adjust my white balance very quickly by pushing the left button. And I can go into my ISO on the side here and adjust my ISO very quickly. And then the, bat, the bottom button is gonna be peaking, so I can turn that on high, medium, low, and that is gonna be on in manual focus. So if I'm in manual focus here and I'm peaking, I've got it set to yellow right there. And so it's on high right now, and I can go in here and adjust that if I want. Now back in my menu, my custom keys on the third page, we have the AEL button up here, and I have that as a zebra display select. All right, so for zebras down here, I have it set to 100. I like to use that as a quick reference when I'm shooting, if I pop my zebras on. I can tell, oh, okay, the back wall back there, I've got zebras showing up right there. That means that that's gonna be a little bit overexposed. So I like to keep it at 100 personally. That's just, just, just how I like to do my zebras. But I can pop it off knowing that that's gonna be a little hot right there. Or I can adjust my, um, my settings to get rid of the zebras there. So I can get right there. Okay, perfect. It's perfectly exposed. Great! And I have the... AF on right here, which is the autofocus on button. I've let that let that be the same. The autofocus here, I need to make sure I'm on autofocus for that to work. It's gonna pull that focus right back to the center. And then the focus hold button, which is on your lens, on certain lens, I have that as the A, the I, AF. I might change that, but it's kind of nice um, on the long lens. You have that, you pop it on, it works, it's on your lens. All right, so now we're gonna talk about picture profiles. You can shoot an S-Log on this camera, which is super powerful and awesome. And I'll show you a couple quick setups for S-Log, but I don't usually shoot an S-Log anymore. I did it a lot. And in the past six months, I've actually tweaked a creative profile inside of my A7S II. And I've applied that same one to the A7R III, just because I can still color correct it in post a bit but I don't have to spend a ton of time color correcting my footage, which you have to do when you shoot an S-Log. You can use LUTs and stuff like that too, but I really have moved away from that unless the project really calls for a lot of intense color correcting. So I'll show you those real quick, but, I, but I'm gonna recommend that you just do a creative profile style with a couple of tweaks and it's gonna make your color correcting process faster unless you really need to do S-Log, then do it, do it. All right, so in the picture profiles here, I have two picture profile setups here. One of them is the S-Log2. I've adjusted the black level to plus two, um, and I've basically left everything else the same, except for I changed my color mode to still, and I did saturation negative two. Everything else is the same, but that's one of my picture profile looks that I like to do with S-Log2. And then the other one that I will use is a picture profile two here, where I'm S-Log3, and I've got the gamut three sin, and I've pretty much left everything else the same. And those are just two that, that I like. Um, you can try them out, definitely try them out before you use them for anything and make sure they're, they're to your liking. But usually what I do now is I use a creative style and I'll turn my picture profile off and I'll go to my creative style and I'm shooting in standard and I've adjusted my contrast to negative three saturation negative two, and I've left the sharpness at zero. So another thing that you wanna do is you wanna set up your function button and the hotkeys inside of that, not hotkeys, but the buttons inside of your function menu. And you can adjust those to what you want them to be. I've put them how I like them right now, and that could change, but at least you'll know how to adjust those and you can kind of fill in some of the gaps that you weren't able to set up with your custom buttons. Inside of your menu here, you're on the second tab again, page eight, you're gonna go down to function menu set, okay? And inside of there, you can set all of the spots on your function menu. So inside of here, I have drive mode for my first one, 
focus mode for my second one, focus area for the third one, creative style, five is shoot mode, six is audio level display. And then on the lower level, we've got picture profile, silent shooting, steady shot, zebra display, prioritize media record, which is for the slots on the side, and face priority and autofocus. So when I'm in my shooting mode, I press the little function button right here, boom, and then I have these options laid out right here. Some of them only apply to photo, so like silent shooting and the drive mode are photo based. So if I switch over to my manual photo mode, you're gonna see those here and you're not gonna see your shoot mode because that's a video option. But basically I've got these things in here that I, that I find useful that I didn't assign to back buttons for the most part. Okay, so finally, there's a couple of random things inside of the menu that I'm gonna show you really, really quick, just so you know that they're there and they're not necessarily related to fu functions or buttons and stuff like that, but things that you might wanna consider turning on or off just to get better video work out of this camera. All right, so when you buy this camera out of the box and you put it into the video mode on the dial on the top, if you don't go in here to exposure mode, this might be set to program auto. And that's gonna not allow you to adjust your shutter speed and all that stuff. It, you know, I'm turning this right now and it's not adjusting my shutter speed, okay? And that is terrifying. So if you go in here and you go down to manual, now if I'm in here, I can adjust my shutter speed and do whatever I want in relation to that. So that's the first thing you wanna do right there, change it to manual exposure. So if you go down to this button right here, this is movie with shutter. If you turn that on, when you're going into your uh, record mode, you can press the shutter button up here and it's gonna actually start recording a video. It's a nice option to have. They have this button up here too on the back you can record a video with, is, which is fantastic. So it's just nice to know that that's there. If you go down to steady shot here, you wanna make sure steady shot is on. It's an in-camera stabilization. It works really, really well. Um, I've left the settings over here to auto. Um, but yeah, turning that on is a great feature to have. I personally like my grid line. I like a rule of thirds grid on here for when I'm shooting just for composition reasons. So I turn that on. I go into the dial setup here and I do this configuration. I prefer it in terms of the shutter speed and the um, aperture. So that's just how I like it. So I've heard that if you go down to this auto power off temp menu and you select high instead of standard, it's gonna help relieve the issues with the camera overheating. I didn't test this at length. I didn't have any issues with it, but try it out see how it works. Comment below, let me know if that worked. Uh, but that's just what I've researched and found. So now I'm gonna actually thumb through all of the menus one by one and sort of pause on each one. You can pause the video and kind of see how I've, how I've set it up. I'm in video mode on the dial on the top, but at least now you'll have an opportunity to look at all the different pages. I didn't talk about everything, but you can at least reference this and decide if it's what you'd like to set your camera up like or not. One last thing to consider is if you're shooting in the full frame versus the super 35 millimeter mode, right? So if you're in super 35, you're gonna get a full pixel readout without pixel binding. Don't know what that means in terms of pixel binding. It conjures up these torture images of the poor pixels being bound up. But, but, but all I do know is that it's basically taking 5K of information oversampling that and then squishing it down into 4K, resulting in exquisite detail and great image quality. So consider that when you're filming, in, if you're in full frame or Super 35. If anyone knows what pixel binding is, please comment below and let me know, because I'm very interested in learning more about those poor pixels and what they have to go through in the binding process. If you like this video, give the thumbs up below a clickety clackety. If you aren't yet subscribed, please do so. It is free and I am posting videos every week and I'm looking forward to seeing all of your lovely faces in the next episode. Peace.